You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Words taken from St. Luke's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The prison was officially known as Camp Sumter, but history books by and large refer to it, this Confederate war site, as Andersonville. Yes, Andersonville in Macon County, Georgia, served as a prison to house tens of thousands of Union soldiers between 1864 and 1865. Andersonville, the very name of this prison, will live on an infamy because of the atrocious conditions present there during the war. Andersonville was an outdoor complex meant to hold at most 6,000 prisoners of war. The prison population, however, exceeded 30,000 men. And during the war between the states, nearly 45,000 prisoners were received at Andersonville. And of these, 13,000 died from disease, dysentery, scurvy, starvation, exposure, and the shots of prison guards. Andersonville was also undersupplied with food, and what supplies there were were of the poorest quality and poorly prepared. And those who did survive the ordeal at Andersonville appeared as walking skeletons, similar to those who survived the concentration camps at Treblinka and Auschwitz. The water supply for the outdoor prison was a small stream, which not only acted as water for drinking and for washing, but also acted as a place for human waste. Gangrene was rampant, forcing multiple amputations and lice on the body and maggots eating away at the open wounds made life truly miserable for all. The inmates were also forced to deal with violent gangs that were formed in the prisons. They called themselves the Raiders. They were organized and they would steal their fellow inmates' food, his jewelry, his money and clothing, leaving the victims severely wounded or even dead. After succumbing to any number of ways of dying, the bodies of the prisoners would then be buried in mass graves. The commander or commandant of Andersonville was named General Henry Weirs. General Weirs was the only Confederate official to be tried and convicted of war crimes resulting from the Civil War. One Union soldier described his entry into Andersonville prison in the following way. I'll quote him. As we entered the place, a spectacle met our eyes that almost froze our blood with terror. Before us were forms that had once been stalwart men, but now were nothing more than walking skeletons covered with filth and vermin. In the center of the camp was a swamp, and part of this marshy place had been used by prisoners as a sink, and excrement covered the ground, the scent arising from which was suffocating. Many of the men in the heat and intensity of their feeling exclaimed with earnestness, Can this be hell? God protect us. Well, into the midst of this hell on earth, God would send an angel, a good Samaritan, a Catholic priest named Father Peter Whalen. Father Peter Whalen was born in County Wexford, Ireland, at the very beginning of the 19th century. He would eventually be ordained a priest and would serve in the Diocese of Charleston, South Carolina. And although far away from home, Father Whalen rejoiced to serve in his country and to serve his fellow Irishmen who had also crossed the sea to the shores of America. But this special work given to him by God through his bishop would be to serve prisoners as a chaplain in the war between the states. He served, for example, as a chaplain for Pulaski, a Confederate installation off the coast of Georgia. And when that fort was decimated by Union artillery, forcing a surrender, Father Whalen accompanied his fellow southern prisoners to a prison facility in New York. It was through his efforts that these soldiers were provided for both spiritually and also physically. The prison conditions in the North were far from perfect, with clothing, medicine, and food in limited supply. But through contact with local Catholic parishes, Father Whalen procured many supplies for his boys, as he called them. Later during the war, Father Whalen would serve as a chaplain for those Union soldiers at Andersonville. 
Father Whalen was the only chaplain, the only minister from any Christian group to serve the men there. And he spent each day from sunup to sundown hearing confessions, baptizing the unbaptized, giving the last rites, sprinkling holy water on many of the dead, and seeing that they were given a proper Christian burial. It was truly living hell on earth. Other priests and even his bishop were so moved by his selfless service amidst the horrors of Andersonville that they came for very short periods to assist him. None of them could handle the experience for more than a few days. Father Whalen never left the men who needed him, and he served at Andersonville until the end of the war. The diaries of men who survived the horrors of Andersonville, whether they were Catholic or Protestant, are filled with the greatest of admiration for Father Whalen and everything that he did for them. Many of the non-Catholics remarked that the ministers of their denominations should be forever shamed because they did nothing. Father Whalen died in Savannah, Georgia, a few years after the war. The turnout for his funeral was the largest the city had ever seen. His funeral procession extended for more than two and a half miles. He was truly a saintly priest. He was a good Samaritan, or as he was called by the history books, the angel of Andersonville. Many people often ask, why does God allow such evil? Why does the good Lord allow such pain, such misery, and even death? Why does he allow wars or all the horrible consequences connected with them, including atrocities and war crimes? Certainly we realize that suffering, pain, and death are not part of the original plan. They were not part of the paradise of Eden. God did not bring sin and death into creation. Rather, Adam did. Mankind and mankind alone is responsible for such evil, not Almighty God. But God does allow evil in order to bring good out of it. The evil of inhumane treatment of prisoners at Andersonville was allowed in order to bring good out of it, including the extraordinary Christian example and supernatural charity of Father Peter Whalen. How many souls died in the state of grace, assuring them of eternal life because of the ministrations of Father Peter Whalen? Like an oil painting which has both bright areas as well as areas of shadow and darkness, so God has painted his creation after the fall of man. If there were no villains, there would be no heroes. If there were no fall of Adam, no coming of the good Samaritan. If there were no persecutors, there would be no martyrs. If there were no evil choices of Judas, Caiaphas, and Pontius Pilate, there would be no saving death of Christ upon the Holy Cross. Without the bitterness of the passion, there would be no sweet resurrection. We praise, we adore, and we give thanks to the one God and three divine persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. God is one God in one perfect unity. God is one nature, one essence, one being, one power, one will, one mind, one love. But in this perfect oneness of being, there is one and only one note of diversity. And that is a distinction in persons based upon relations. In that perfect oneness, there is a communion. There is a fellowship of related persons. The unbegotten Father, the only begotten Son, and the bond of love proceeding from the both known as the Holy Ghost. Almighty God, therefore, is not some sort of impersonal force, but a personal God with relations within himself and through grace, extended relations with angelic and human persons like ourselves. You know, George Lucas in his Star Wars religion, which is based on the false pagan religions of the East, is impersonal and it's dualistic. For a force has no personality and can be used for either good or for the dark side. An impersonal force would not have inspired Father Peter Whalen to enter into the hell that was Andersonville. It was the love of God the Father, a divine person giving us his only begotten Son as a sacrificial victim on the cross, 
It was this love personified in the Holy Ghost that drove, that compelled Father Whalen to sacrifice himself for the sake of others. Father Whalen and all of us, in fact, are made according to the image of this one God in three persons. And that image is Trinitarian, a communion of three persons in one God, a communion, a fellowship that the Holy Trinity wishes to expand to include us. If we are united to the Son through grace, if we are truly sharers in his divine sonship, then we too can enter into the life and love of the Holy Trinity. It is this message that can truly convert the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.